I've got a theory. Uh, you may disagree with me, but I've got a theory. I think that actually your dust up with Kurt Bush actually is why I got the attention. And here's why. Hold on, let me finish because I think you're already ready to disagree with me. Remember, we you're had good at what you do. We, we, hold on, though. We had the attention of Sports Illustrated that year. I know Lars Anderson. Yeah, I know. And he was writing a story on you. However, it was only going to be on. Well, what we were told is it was only going to be on the website. He lied to us. No, no, no. He didn't lie to us. He he didn't have any control <laughs> over that. That he's not an editor. He didn't lie to us. But but he had come down and and we'd done interviews and so us doing Sports Illustrated was a major yeah. deal and I'd been working on that deal and we got the Sports Illustrated deal but we didn't think it was going to be in the magazine and yet when the Michigan thing happened and and you uh, did what you did to Kurt <laughs> <laughs> and, and maybe we talk about that here oh yeah we're but talk but, about but, it. but but when you did that. That got us in the magazine. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you agree. Like, that got us in the magazine. Lars Anderson said, we ain't got to worry about websites now. We're in, the, we're in the big deal. And I remember that. And so when that Sports Illustrated article came out, I think Jade Gersh noticed. I Like, how, you know, did we have any business being in Sports Illustrated? Ultra Motorsports, Jim Smith, you know. Blowing up every week. Yeah. Struck a theme. We had one, we had Michigan, one race where Pocono, I thought. Pocono, holy shit. Bristol, you led a bunch of laps, got yeah. caught under caution. caution. It, but that was the one thing. So I think, but but here it is. I look back at Mike several Agee. things. How many I motor, oh my God. Go Mike Eggy was a motor builder. Yeah. But I think that Blown that might have been di uh, unfortunate for you on how that all transpired with the Kurt Bush no, deal. But I, 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 don't, I don't think so. I think that, that that deal at Michigan, then I come to realize how, how important I was to the fans. Yes. Same as you. That was the best PR work I've ever done. Ever done. You, you, I, I, you remember well, you come? I said, this is a setup, buddy. They are not going to let me race Wednesday night. Remember, I flew, we flew to freaking Bristol. I know that. We did because you're. You I had, said, you Mike, this hearing. is cut and dried. And I told them to their face. I said, you son. Oh, anyway. Hold on, though. But remember, like, I, I don't think you actually punched Kurt Bush because of anything that happened on the track. Can we stop? Yeah. Can I, like. Yeah, you, you, you're right. You're the host of the show. No, but like <laughs> y'all are not. Let's let's get okay. Stay, the, take it again. Let's get into the details. Okay, go ahead. First off, of what happened. So that's true. We should do that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Like I don't know, and I'm sure a lot of people listening don't know if he ever did get punched. I don't know what happened. Oh, I that's right. Well, he came out with a bloody nose, so something happened. Don't know how that happened. He hit the steering wheel. So Is that what happened. <laughs> So there's stuff's going on on the racetrack. 2003, Michigan International Speedway. So there's stuff going on on the racetrack. Y'all are running over each other, banging into each other. Post-race, you're in the garage before him, out of your car. What happened? <sighs> Tell me exactly it, he, what went down. He, uh, the year prior, he says I wrecked him at Phoenix. Then he says... That he re he took the win off me at Bristol. He yeah. tried to wreck me at Bristol. Moved you out of the way. And that was and his first win. Yeah, and and he he's lucky that day I was driving for Ganassi because if if I was driving for myself he wouldn't have won. But you got to do what your car owner says. You don't want to lose your job. And then the following time it was another track. And Indy. He says I wrecked him. I didn't even have a scratch on my car. Something broke on his car, and he he blames me. Anyway, you hit him in Indy. Oh. Huh? It, you touched him at Indy. You ran into that. Indy, come, come on. You think oh. I did? You <laughs> hit him. Yes, I think you did. That's pretty damn good, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> they did not even know that. I mean, Hel <laughs> Helton come over and looked at the car. He says, Spencer, how the hell did you do that? There's not a marker in your car. Because I says, Bobby Allison taught me how to do that. So let's get. <laughs> so you are admitting it. Let's oh, I admit it. I spun that son bitch out, and I hope he broke his neck. Oh, geez. oh my God! <laughs> so he goes. So at Phoenix. All right. No, th no, that was no, the first. I'm one. sorry. No, Michigan, you mean Michigan? Yeah, Michigan. Yeah, Michigan. Now it's it's still happening. It's still going on. Yeah. Post race, you're out of your car. You're well. Tell you how it happened, bud. So we were running for the win. Yeah. He was too, and we had to pit for fuel. Well, he says he ran out of fuel. Okay. Long story short, you know how Michigan is. You have to come in the pit road. Yeah. So as we're coming, I don't know where we finished. Pissed off. Now, I'm, my car is here. That bastard comes down there, a 300-mile-an-hour, revenous motor, cuts me off. 
after the race. Th- this is in the garage. This yeah. is this is before you get in the garage. Before well, you get in the garage. Yeah. Actually, the, oh, uh, I got you. What's his name? Uh, he was there. All right. Uh, yeah. So who was there? All right. Doesn't matter. We just talked. Doesn't about matter who's there. You tell the happened. truck driver. Yeah. Jeff Miles. Jeff Miles. So anyway, Jeff was always the first one of the car to help me out. But anyway, so now as you're coming down down in the thing, all the trucks are lined up, and he has to turn this way, and he pretends his car's not going, and he, he, he wants me to hit him. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to teach that son of a bitch a lesson. I am going to hit him. Well, Miles, no, oh, no, 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 no. So he says, well, my car ran out of gas or whatever. So, you know, he blocks a whole line. He screws everybody. I get out of the car. Yep. He calls me to the car. Hey, you old bastard. That's what he said? He said, hey, you old bastard. Oh. And My it, friend, Bobby Allison, says it needs to be addressed. Yeah. <laughs> so you walked up to his car. I walked up to his car. They're, they're like this in the garage. I get it. Knows it too. Yep. I said, get out of the car. And let's just finally settle this. And I says, I'll put one hand behind my back and whip your ass. You said that to him? Yeah. So he ain't going to get out of the car. This is what he does, Dale. He calls me to the car, sitting in the car, calls me to the car. I go up to the car. He says, you old decrepit has-been, I know where your family lives. And I went like that. And he swings at me. But he's in the car. He's in the car. This is how stupid this person can be. All right. <laughs> I went, you stupid son of a bitch. Boom. <laughs> and I saw the blood. And I went, holy <laughs> shit, no. You coward. You know, and he would not get out of the car. He, he, he is, he is. What did he, what did he say when you hit him? He, he was shocked. And I didn't, I, I didn't really intend to, you know, I just bitch slapped him. Yeah. That's all I did. He, he ain't a man because he couldn't take a punch. It, it, was, it was just a little backhander. I know what he said after he hit What did he say? You're over. You're ended. You're done. That's right. That, That's what yeah. Kurt said when he got out of the car. You had it on tape. I also have it in my memory. I mean, you, I, I know you leaned in there. So, so what he did is he parked in front of the lift gate. You couldn't pull your car up on the truck. No. And he parked in front of it, and he kept you because y'all were playing those games. And then when you went into the, I just remember watching this because because you go in and you're leaned in, and I just think y'all were having your conversations. I'd seen you go at Todd Bodine a couple times. I know how these things work. But when he got out with the bloody nose, I was like, oh, he hit him. And then and then Kurt Bush is like, you're done, you're over, it's over, and he went straight to the NASCAR hauler. And we went straight to your car trying to get out of the track. <laughs> we almost made it. <laughs> All right. So we did almost make it. <laughs> and what we happened? Were off, well, we were waiting for them to let the line go, and we're like, come on, let's get out of here. I we, said, we're. And then I'm, the NASCAR. I, I'm laying in the back. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. He, he did. was laying in we the back. We were trying to do an escape. Yeah. We were. I was Those are in the back. good, important details <laughs> yeah, well, for a podcast. <laughs> so, so we went, he's like, Mike, get the car. And, and so <laughs> we're getting the car, <laughs> and, then we're, and then we're laying there, and we're like, come on, let the crossover thing go, let <laughs> it go. And then finally, this NASCAR official goes. <laughs> I said, and we're like, like what did NASCAR official do? <laughs> he pointed his finger. He pointed his finger. You like, get out. You're coming I with said, us. I said to listeners. Mike, that's our ass. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> so, y'all have to go to the hauler. Is yeah. Kurt still in there? Oh, hell no. He's long gone. He gone. Who's talking to He's you? He's a Helton? coward. Who's talking to you? Helton? Helton said, what happened? And I told him there's more to the story than meets the eye. Mike, yeah. are you there? Not inside. No, I'm okay. outside. Yeah, okay. I'm so outside the Helton door. says, I told you I got to do something about this. I says, no, you don't. I says, that son of a bitch deserves what he got because he threatened my family. He threatened my family. And I remember growing up with my dad. The boys would sit there and the girls would sit there and mom would sit there. And dad said, if anything ever happens to any of these girls, I'll kill you. You protect them. It's just the way my dad was. Mm-hmm. You've protected your family. And uh, who, when he said that to me about my family, that was the end of it. And I told Helton, and Helton said, you shouldn't hit him. I says, Mike, I didn't hit him. He hit me first. He swung at me first. He missed. Yeah. I didn't that's miss. That's as good as a. That's it. That's, that's in the court of law. <laughs> and It didn't go to the court of law. Just, that's it, in the court of law. If in the court can, of Spencer, maybe. You, Mike. <laughs> You swing at somebody. Oh, and oh, and I see what you're saying. <laughs> right. Just I'm Bullshit. saying record that never went to. They threatened. The reason I'm, I knew what he, he got. I know what he meant. But they threatened a lawsuit. 
Oh, yeah, they, they threatened, threatened a lawsuit. lawsuit. What? Yes. Yes. Yeah. That day. Yes. Absolutely. Jack Roush was saying we're suing him. Why? Yeah. That's why I'm drawing distinction between the fact that this never actually made it to the court of law. That's okay, why I'm okay, saying okay, that. Okay, okay, okay. So Jack comes in. <clears throat> He's hot as a firecracker. And I'm calm. I, one thing, you want to hear the truth, I'm going to tell you the truth. So Jack's sitting there and Helton's sitting there. And I says, there's more. So Jack, I says, relax. Calm down. Blah, blah, blah. So this needs to be told. So Jack's sitting there and I tell Jack what happened. Okay. Well, Jack knows they have a run-in with, with them in the past. Yeah. So one thing leads to another. Jack takes the car home and checks it. Jimmy Finning, ironically, is his crew chief. Jack, I take off Bristol. The fans make me a hero. Mike calls me on the phone. He says, you need to listen to this. And they were ranting and raving, Jimmy Spencer, Mongo. Remember, Mike, it was... Signs, everything. It was... You took off... Well, he I, oh, no, no. Race. I got kicked out for the truck he, race, he, he the was bush at, race, and the cup for race. Punching it. Yeah. For him hitting his hand on my fist. So here's what happened. He, got, he, got, he got fined. Let and, me or, rephrase that. For his face hitting yeah. my... Yeah. So he was going to miss <laughs> Bristol the next week. He did miss yeah. Bristol. We went to Bristol early to try to appeal it. And, and lost the appeal. And, um, How did you lose the appeal? Because oh, never had a chance. I really? Mean, like, uh, yeah. Come right. on, Dale. Yeah, that, that, back then, people weren't winning appeals. But um, uh, I'm just saying. It probably. They, they, yeah. They, they, yeah. <laughs> 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 Dale, you're used to winning appeals. Seems like pretty easy. Uh, I'm, <laughs> just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. He won an appeal just a few weeks yeah. ago. So, uh, awesome. It's a good feeling. It's a good feeling. I think NASCAR's changed some over the years. But I, I believe in my – I know from listening that, hey, they took the one up from me at Daytona. I believe back then they were, there was, they were either – you were either going to be guilty or not. Yeah, you had a target on your back. Yeah. Here's one of the things. You had a I'm, reputation. Yeah. But, and then everything that had happened between yeah. y'all. Here's That's one of the true. things I'm most proud of, though. Is that so? You just heard Jimmy, and I've always had this here. I've always been curious, but I've always felt like the only reason you did punch him was because of him parking where he parked and the things no. that happened off the track. Well, I knew things had escalated, Jimmy. I get that, but I'm just saying, like that day, because you and I, when we talked on the airplane going back, I was like, What? what I mean, why'd you hit him? And you're like, He parked in front of my truck. You see that, didn't you? And I'm like, Is that really why you did it, though? I mean, is that it? I, I, but, I, to, I told Helton and them the same thing. I said, you, Jack was sitting there, and I said, First of all, he threatened my family. See, I didn't know that. And I told Jack, I said, you know what? Cut both my hands off. I'll still figure a way of kicking your ass or doing something about it. Because that's the way I was raised with my dad. And that got Jack's attention. I got you. But, but let, me, let me do this. I somehow got my hands on the in-car radio. Yeah, you did. And it's Kurt Busch saying, I tried to wreck him, yep. but I'm not, I guess I'm just too good of a guy. And he's talking to Jimmy Finnig on the radio. Now, this is before NASCAR's track pass and all that stuff. And so, you know, I don't even recall how I got the radio. But what I did with it is I sent it to Dave Despain for Wind Tunnel. Yep. And I said, look, you want to know why Jimmy wrecked him or why Jimmy hit him? Because he was – admitted that he had to he was trying to take jimmy out in the race that's why and i was hoping that they wouldn't ask any follow-up questions to me because honestly it was all bs because i did there, there's no way jimmy could have known what kurt bush was saying on the radio during a race right? right i mean certainly not at that time but i put that to, to dave to spain they play it and man it was just sit back and watch what happens because then <laughs> you all of a sudden the fans became Big time, like like they well, that that hurt a, was the the uh, enemy in that deal. Yeah, and, and and what hurt more than anything, Mark Martin calls me on the phone. Thursday, Teammate, teammates with Kurt at the time. I think. Yes, sir, Mike. Uh, yes, sir, Dale. And he says, Spence. He says, I need you to come to the motor home tomorrow night. Okay. So we we go to Darlington. Nothing happens. We we t we totally didn't address. It was over with because it was over. I, I missed Bristol. Had a chance of winning all three races. Uh, we miss it. Really missed it bad because I knew the truck was good. I knew the Bush car finished in the top five and the Cup car finished in the top five. I was really pissed off because I knew I was way better than the driver that was in it. But anyway, Jack Roush wants to meet me at Mark's bus. Oh. This is the two weeks after yeah. the incident. 
Jack comes in. He's late. He comes in. Mark says, I'll leave you guys alone. I says, no, you can sit here, Mark. It doesn't matter. And Mark and I were good friends. And Jack comes in. He says, I'm sorry for what happened at Michigan. Mm. And I went, Jack, you know, I told you there was more to the story met the eye. He says, well, I went, checked the car out. He lied. He, he lies all the time. He lied to me. Blah, blah. You know, one thing leads to another. And uh, I mean, accept my apology. I said, we need to tell the media. I can't do that. Think about it from my side. <laughs> 2,000 employees, whatever, all my sponsors. But you got me personally. You and I personally know that. <sighs> I, I accepted it. And it hurts because the fans didn't know how bad that driver was. He's a terrible driver. Got fired from Roush, got fired from Pence, got fired from everywhere he worked. I mean, all truthfulness. Your old man told me one time, if he fingers me one more time, Spencer, I'm going to break his hand off and stick it up his ass. <laughs> he never learned. He never learned. He, hell, he's a hell of a race car driver. But, you, never, you know, Darrell Waltrip always says, you got to learn how to race. you got to learn. It's respect. He has no respect in the garage area. Your dad had respect, Rusty Wallace, Jeff Gordon. You did. I mean, he, he, you had respect, and he never did. And when you look over his career, what happened? Well, Jack was the one that told me that. Mark, same way. And he gets fired at the end of the year. So, but then he gets, Roger Pesky comes. Jimmy, I said, yeah, Roger. Mr. Pesky, Roger. You and me are going to get to the bottom of this. I'm going to get this settled. I says, until somebody says they're sorry, can't accept their apology. You can't, I'm going to get it done. He never did. I flew home with, Roger from Atlanta. And he said, you know, Spencer, he's just not, he's a hell of a race car driver, but he's just not quite the person that, I, I forget how Roger explained it. Sure. He fired, Roger fired him. Yeah, years later. Right? Yeah. Or well, several it, years later, right. Yeah, but he gets fired because yeah. he sent dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying he can't drive, but he just, you know what I'm trying to get at? You oh, just Lord. don't. You, you, Has he gotten better? Did I wreck you because you wrecked me at Richmond? No. Did, you, you know what so I'm, the funny thing is, is we actually ended up in the back of a pickup truck like the next week. Really? Isn't that how <laughs> oh, it works? Is that right? It always never fails. It never fails. You never run over fails. a guy, you're going to be in the pickup truck for intros the next week. Yeah. And Did I said, hey, Jimmy, I didn't have any brakes. And he's like, he's like, all right, don't worry about it. I was like, had some problems with my brakes that night. Got yep. in the corner too deep, run over you. Nobody goes out there with the attention and wrecking yeah. anybody, right? I mean, in all truthfulness, you don't. I mean, it's the way you raced. Yeah. Life is best lived in motion. And that's why Tire Pros gets you ready for all your driving adventures. Whether it's along corners and curves, across city and state lines. Because we're more than just tires. We're auto care, too. Tire pros, so you can focus on the road ahead. 